Okay. Oh, wow, we're live. That was fast. Okay, so... Try to zoom in a little bit better on... Actually, this is good. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. This is Bear. Now, Bear has been prepped. Step one, step two, prep and skin the skin. Um, wash and dry, step three. So we've already been through all of that. And he went outside and went number one and number two. Uh, and now we're about to finish him up. And I figure since we're here alone, might as well go ahead and stream this and show everyone how to do it. So even though I combed him before the bath, <clears throat> you know, before I start the haircut, I'm gonna go through and still comb out some more of this dead hair that's catching. Let me see if I can bring this a little closer. There we go. All right. So I'm just gonna go through and comb him out real quickly before we start the haircut. Make sure everything's nice and combed out. All the tangled hair is worked out. Sometimes, especially on the ears here, the tips of the ears, it's gonna get really thick with tangles and everything. So the slicker brush is a really good way to just break it up without pulling or tugging too much, causing too much pain. So see that? I'm just gonna get all of that dead hair that's causing that. Okay, buddy, I think it's just a comb. There you go. Nice. So now that ear feels much better. It looks darker too. So just to show you the difference. <clears throat> look at this ear here where I've combed it. And look at this ear here. It looks dull, more gray because all that dead hair. So I'm just going to brush that out. <clears throat> It's impossible to get all of it because even before the bath, I got a really good bit of hair out and I got them all combed out where the comb was going through, not catching on anything. But then after the bath and, you know, drying him out, um, again, the, there's some dead hairs in there that we missed. And even after the haircut, um, <laughs> when I go back through with the comb, you'll notice that there are still some areas where you'll catch a few tangles. So it's a never ending process because every follicle, every hair fiber is on a different life cycle of its own. So even though we comb out all of this dead hair today, right now, about an hour later, see, look at that. I got all the, these mats out before the bath, but they're still more forming. So, uh, even though I get him all completely combed out today and, you know, he's still going to feel super smooth and silky and soft. It will last for a while, but still, like, immediately, within hours from now, already, um, his skin is going to be replacing older hairs. Newer hairs are growing in to replace the hairs that we combed out today. So it's a... It's a living system, their skin. It's the, it's the largest organ in the dog's body. Okay. See that? Getting some more of these mats. And you want to catch it with your comb rather than the comb guard, you know, the snap-on comb attachment. Because it, when you catch it with the comb guard with the clippers, that's when you start making dents and divots, you know, and marks on, on the coat. But when we go through and comb out the coat before we go through with the clippers, then the comb catches any of these tangles and mats that those clippers will catch on. Whoa. And it'll clear it right out so that when we actually do the clipper work, we don't have to worry about catching the clippers catching on the hair. So, good boy, bear to fight <laughs> and spin. I think I filmed it one time too when I'm under other, other 
house, their other place of residence. <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, he used to spin, jump, cry. So I'm trying to leap off the table. And so this is a huge improvement. There you go. Good boy. Oh, he feels so soft and fluffy. The hair feels so silky because this hair is being combed out. So now the hair left behind is feeling so nice and silky and soft and fluffy. Okay. And so you know you got to you know he's got to be feeling better too because the hair is an extension of their skin. So a lot of times when you see a nasty patch of hair, you'll you'll notice that the skin underneath it is nasty as well. But when the hair is doing, you know, when the hair looks nice, usually the skin's doing well as well because the skin is what grows the hair. And they really they say that instead of th thinking of the skin and the coat as two separate entities, um, we really should think of it as one and the same skin coat because their hair is literally just an extension of their skin. So by clearing it out and make, getting their hair to feel so nice and soft and separated and fluffy, I'm sure their skin feels much more comfortable as well. There we go, especially because all those tangles and mats were pulling at his skin. There we go. So now, he is completely combed out, head to tail, literally, head to toe, tip to tail, nose to tail, I guess. <laughs> there we go. Good boy. Alrighty. And you can feel the roughness, and then it starts to smooth out and feel nice and smooth. And that's when you know, okay, stop combing now, slow down. See, that's what we're getting. All right, so now we can go ahead and start the haircut. Now, usually, are there any princess? He trusts you now because you're so kind to him. Yeah, I hope so. Um, I don't think he would consider me being kind to him. He's like this mean guy. He doesn't let me off the table. <laughs> Good thing I brushed his teeth. Mm, he just stuck his tongue in my mouth. There you go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Bear. What I was trying to do is decide between an uh, A comb and an E comb. This is one inch. The A comb is uh, three quarters of an inch. So this is 19 millimeters. This is 25 millimeters. So six millimeters difference. And I'm just going to go through and kind of eye it. Yeah, I think, I think that'll be good. Because the E comb, the one inch comb on his body, I don't I see it's not really gonna take much off. Okay, so yeah, I think what I'll do is do the A comb on his body then. Go through with this comb, see it'll take about, about a little bit, the, like the quarter of the, of the hair, like the tips off. So I'm gonna go through with this, give him a nice shape. Okay. Uh, under the snap-on comb, I'm going to be using the Buttercut 30 blade. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> I did his paw pads earlier with that. Okay. So first things first, and by this time, everything else is done. I've brushed his teeth, cleaned his ears, filed his nails. Everything is done. So. Once we get to the point where I'm doing the haircut, I want everything else to be done. That way, once we're done clipping him and doing the scissor work, then boom, he's, he's free to go. Okay, so we're gonna start right back here, right where that white band is, kind of right behind. Now, let me turn this way. We're gonna go down this angle, like a slight diagonal angle. See that? Following the natural curvature of the dog. There we 
go. So along the top of the back, I'm going straight back, but then as I hit, start to hit the sides, the ribs, I'm going to go down at a 45 degree angle with the natural angles of the dog. There we go. Ready. Now I'm going to turn them towards me so I can get to the chest area. I like to get into the armpits really nice and tight. That way it gives a nice little shape there, it keeps it nice and clean. So right under the armpits, I like to do right there. Okay. So now, before I go to the other side, I like to just double check my work really quick. So what I'm going to do is just go comb everything up again one more time, and then go back through, and then we'll move to the other side. So you won't get a lot, but you do get some, and that some makes a big difference. Okay. And you'd be surprised. It really doesn't take a lot of hair being taken off to make a big difference. Sometimes it's just a little bit of hair taken off in the right place. Just gives that dog that nice, sleek look. See that? Just that little bit being taken off. Just cleans it up that much. So much more. You know, just really, just nice and clean. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to do the other side. Okay, I'm coming on this side here. <clears throat> and again, comb everything up. Oh. <laughs> See that? It's just a comb buddy. There you go. <coughs> so comb everything up. And that way when you when you go down with the clippers, it'll comb everything down in the direction it's, it's supposed to lay. Catch all those hairs and give you a nice even cut. There we go. Just like to clear out the blades just in case hair gets packed in there. Okay. So we just want to go straight back. Starting right kind of at the base of the neck, where that white band is again, you know, where the shoulder blades meet kind of.
Good boy, Bear. I'm so proud of you, buddy. Okay, perfect. Perfect, Bear. You are such a great model. Okay, so he's he's uh, wanting you guys to see how I do the backside here. So I go in like that. Thank you so much, Bear. Oh my goodness. Giving them the perfect angle. Lift it up and just clean up right there at the base of the tail. Like that. So we do like that. All right, and just blend out here. And then we go. And you know here as well, his back leg, <clears throat> I like to lift it up and just kind of glue down the bend here. Clean that up nicely. Like that. And then that gives that a nice little shape right there. Okay. And everything's going to blend nicely. Let's turn this way, buddy. Here, let's turn this way. So people can see what we're doing. Okay. There you go, Bear. Good boy. Good boy, Bear. Isn't he doing so good? There we go. all that because <clears throat> when you have even a little bit of hair packed in between those blades it's going to affect your cut so every once in a while it's good to just go ahead and check the blade make sure you get the the hair that gets packed in between those blades make sure you clear that out that way you get a nice smooth cut
you know? <coughs> and the light, you want a light touch. The lighter the touch, the better the cut. Which is opposite of what I used to think. I, I thought, you know, if I dug in the coat more, then I would get a nicer, closer cut. But it's opposite. It's the lighter the touch. You just kind of want to skim almost. There we go. There's another mat right there, right behind the ear. Got that out. Okay. Blend this later, so I don't know why I do that. There we go. It's the OCD in me. There we go. Okay, I just want to I just want to keep going over and over and perfect it till it's. <coughs> Anyways, uh... so now. We're going to do the legs with the one inch comb, the longer comb, so six millimeters longer than the body. So snap that bad boy right on there like that. Right? Look at me. Look at me. This is what we're doing. <laughs> was kidding. He can't even see. <laughs> look at him. He can't even see. Look over here. Here, look here. See? <laughs> He's like, where? Okay. So the legs, on the back of the legs, I'm going to go forward. Then on the inside of the legs, Towards the front, I'm going to go against the grain, and then back. Cool. And there we go. And then, you know what? I'm not going to go reverse on the front. I think his legs look nicer, really long. So I'm just going to trim the edges, the tips. There we go. Against the grain to make it nice and clean. There we go. There we go. Good boy bear. You're such a good boy. And I've gotten so used to grooming with the cord. <coughs> it used to bug me and get in my way. Now it's almost like like a dance partner or something. I think I might miss it. I think I might miss uh, dancing around the cord while I'm grooming. But nah, I wouldn't miss it too much. I tried some cordless clippers and I love it. <laughs> but yeah, the cord doesn't bother me too much though. I just kind of learned to flip it around me, you know, flip it out, flip it out the way. There we go. One last leg. See, and when you pull it away like that, again, the lighter the touch, the better it's going to work out for you. When he starts to pull away and things like that, if I hold tighter and start yanking and pulling back, it starts to become more of a fight, a tug of war. But it's his leg, you know, let him have it. <laughs> so I just, 
I, I actually just do a lot of like a lighter touch and you'll see that they kind of they, they don't pull away so much there's not such a strong reaction because I'm not I'm not grabbing him tighter you know where he feels like he has to pull harder there we go And again, I gotta, I gotta sometimes remind the OCD part of my, my personality, like, hey, I'm gonna go through with the scissors and I'm gonna scissor everything so it doesn't have to look great. I see these are sticking out and I want it to look perfect. But I have to remind myself, I'm not trying to perfect the haircut, I'm just trying to set the length with the clipper guards. So even though I see a lot of stuff like right there, you know, I have to remind myself I am going to go through with the scissors and finish the cut, so <laughs> let's not obsess. So now, the head. Now here's how I do a round teddy bear head. And I'd like to give a shout out to Angela Smutney, I believe is her last name. But Angela is Barbara, Barbara's business partner at Swanky Paws Pet Salon in Lawrenceville. And um, Barbara is the lady who taught me how to groom like 10 years ago. Um, hey, what's up, Barbara, if you're watching? Probably, she's probably not. But anyways, um, Angela showed me, when I was working at their shop one day, Angela showed me this video um, of how to do an easy puppy cut or a round teddy bear head, and I loved it. So let me see if I can pull this closer so you can get a good look at what I'm doing. So here's what I do. So... The same length as the legs, because the legs are gonna be longer than the body, about two lengths, two sizes up. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. Starting where I started here, see, I started right here, right around where the white band is, like right at the back of his neck. So that's where I'm gonna start. And I'm gonna go forward. See that? And I remember the first time I did this, I was like, oh no, <laughs> what if I ruined the head, you know? Oh my God, how am I going to come back from that? Especially because I wasn't very confident in my scissor skills either. Um, scissoring a, a round head kind of gave me some anxiety. So I remember the first time I did this, I was like, oh, what? what? What if I ruin it, right? So we go forward. Now we go backward. and it's gonna blend it right into that neck. See that? Nice, easy way to do a round teddy bear head. So now that we've got that, see that? So now it's nice and blended. See that? The back of the neck is nice and blended. And then, it's a little bit flat there, but it's okay, we can, <laughs> but you get the idea, right? So, oh, boom, and then boom, right? Now we got the nice shape, right? And then, you want to go through here, and this is going to give you the shape for the bottom. It's going to give you the outline for the chin. There we go. Same thing on the other side, just flip the ear over. All right, go up this way and back down, side to side. All right, up, down, side to side. <laughs> and then, then you have the shape, see that? Now you have a nice shape for the let me lower this so it's a little bit better angle. See that? So now you have a nice round shape for the head. Good shake, buddy. And the rest of his body, look at how nicely shaped it is. Right here, buddy. Look at that. See? Look over here, bear. There you go. Oh, so cute. So now all I have left to do is scissor. Scissor everything up, give them a nice shape, and we're out of here. So, I'm gonna use my thinners first.
to trim right in between the eyes. Okay. Now that's a bad habit. You shouldn't place your scissors on the table. Let me put it in my pocket here. Probably not a good idea to put scissors in your pocket either, but you know, bear with me. I'm, give me a break. You know, shoot, can I do anything? <laughs> okay. So first of all, um, you want to flip your scissors in like that, right? I'll show that to you again. This, <coughs> see, you do like this. So you use your pinky here, right, to catch it. See that? So you flip your pinky over the that rest, flip it, catch it with your pinky. Now it's in your palm of your hands. Now you can use your comb. All right? So here we go. Watch the odors come home. <laughs> I'd be like, excuse me, can you step outside? I'm filming. And shoot. Have some manners, you know? Be, have some consideration for my YouTube audience, you know? Could you please step outside? <laughs> Keep it. To, to one day become that bold, you know? To tell the homeowners to get out of their own home <laughs> and wait outside because I'm streaming on YouTube. That'll be the day. I'll be like, shoot, I've fine. I said I would become bolder and more, <laughs> more brave. Here I am. No, that's arrogant, right? That's <laughs> that's like arrogant, narcissistic, you know, <laughs> delusional. Okay. They probably would step outside, right? They would step outside to make a phone call, nine one one. Okay. So there we go. So see that side, you can see the eye. So there we go, let's clear it a little bit better. There we go. So now you can see his eyes on that side. Same thing on this side here. See, so before I learned how to do this, this, this scissor flip, I used to, I used to hold the scissors like this. And you can see how that kind of poses a danger a little bit. But when you have it tucked in, you know, there we go. All right, just flexing, you know. I guess I didn't really have to explain that one more time. I just like to flex, no, I'm saying. <laughs> okay, we put this up. All righty. As far as I know, as far as I know, I'm the only dog groomer who, who has mastered the scissor, like, <laughs> scissor flip technique. Bam, bam. Okay, sorry about that bear. Bear's like, could you please? Okay, sorry, buddy. Let me focus. I get excited, you know? I get excited when people are around. Sorry about that bear, man. There we go. How's that look? Now, now you can see both eyes. Oh, look how cute he is. Okay. <laughs> so now, now that we have the in between his eyes cleared up and nice and cleaned up, I'm gonna go ahead to the visor. So now I'm gonna switch to my curve shears. And this is, I think, six inch or maybe, it's a short one. It's pretty short. See, it's like the size of my finger, middle finger. So it's a pretty short shank, but I like the short shanks because it seems to ha just be a lot easier to control. The cut is much easier, right? And it's, I feel like the, the blade stays sharper longer. So I like the short shanks. So just remember, it's not the size of the shank. <laughs> it's the motion of the... Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, we should probably change the subject really quickly. So, Bear, you are behaving so well today compared to previous sessions. Okay, so you want to... <coughs> so the scissor angle and the scissor... Um, 
the scissor angle and the scissor tilt, I guess, the, the, the scissor angle right here. So you want to hold it right here, but tilt it a little bit, 45 degree angle, like that. Then it'll give you a natural little bevel. Same thing on the other side. Clean that up. Okay. So then again, you want to double check your work. So I'm going to pull these ears back. Comb it forward one more time. And then trim the hairs that stick out. Those hairs. So then stick out. There we go. There we go. <clears throat> so now we comb that back. And I'm gonna shape all of this up with the thinners as well at the very end, just to soften up all those lines. So there we go. Now we move on to the ears, to round the ears. Try to snip that. All right, now, now for the ears. Okay. Uh, what I like to do is almost, almost like a Bichon style ear, you know, where you're kind of rounding it into the head, treating it as part of the head. Um, because he doesn't have a Bichon coat, um, you know, we can't really do that. But I do like to kind of use the, head as a good reference to the shape that I want for the ears. So I want it nice and rounded here at the bottom. There we go. And then same thing on the other side. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> and now you can round the muzzle into the ears. So you see how each part kind of builds into the neck so that we're blending everything together so that it all just looks like it's working together harmoniously. And that's why I love the analogy of like a symphony, you know, all the different parts working together, but you don't want any one part of the symphony to be too loud and take over. You want it to all work together in harmony. Okay, so tidy that up a little bit. There we go. And then <clears throat> around this muzzle, get rid of the edges, you know, the sharp edges. There we go. Now, okay. And I'm gonna shape all of that up with the thinners to make it nice and round and soft. So I'm gonna move on to the feet because the perfectionist in me 
wants to sit here and whittle away at it and get it nice and perfect. But then um, the feet and nothing else has been really being worked on. <laughs> so after I spend hours perfecting the head, which nobody really will even care about, um, <laughs> the rest of the body is just sitting there waiting to be done. So what I figured to do, which is myself to continue moving on, you know, just keep moving on with the groom and come back and fix it. You know, we can always come back and fix it and perfect it when we're about to finish the groom. But it is important to keep moving so that we don't spend, you know, an eternity on the grooms. Let me get some water here. All right. So now we're going to work on the feet and the legs, and he's pretty much done. <clears throat> now you can, they say they have a system. You can start with any leg. Just make sure you start with the same leg each time. I am a little bit of a rule breaker on that area. I just feel like, because they say the, the reason for having um, a process like that, a routine, starting with like the rear left leg, for example, and then moving around in a circle and doing the same thing every time with each dog, it prevents forgetting about a foot. And I get it in the beginning, I would sometimes forget about a foot <laughs> because you have so much information that you're processing. It's new, you know, and all this stuff. But now I feel like, you know, 10 years into this, if I forget about a foot, um, I may need to worry about something medical going on, you know, like maybe something with my brain, you know, like why, why did I forget that foot, you know, <laughs> like I should have been able to do it in my sleep. But anyways, so, but I do like to start with the rear foot, I've noticed. Okay. But sometimes I start with the front foot and it really just depends on the dog and the situation. Okay, so I lift the foot up and snip the bottom of the foot like that. Sorry, I didn't think about the camera. Like that. So, and once I put the foot down, <coughs> then you can comb it out. And then scissor a nice round foot. You have to see it first in your mind. Visualize the circle, you know, imagine a nice circle, a nice round circle, you know, nice round foot. And in your mind's eye, that imaginary line that you draw, any hair that sticks out of it, just snip it off. Just like that. Okay. Now, clean up the front here a little bit. Make sure it has a nice curve to it. All right. Clean that up nice. And then here in the back as well, we want to give him a nice rear angulation, you know, to highlight the natural bend of his rear leg, of that knee. There you go. So you give him some nice curves there. Now we'll move on to this front foot here. Again, same thing. I'm going to click.
put the hair on the bottom of the feet to really clean up around the foot pads here so that whenever he runs around outside, if it's wet, then he doesn't track in too much water or moisture. You know, we don't want mops on his feet. So once it's nice and clean like that, see, you can see the foot pads of the feet. Then you put it down and again, same thing as before. Sometimes it helps to hold the other foot up so that he doesn't hop. Make it diff too difficult to scissor that foot. There we go. This up a little bit. There we go. go. <coughs> All right, other side. It's all these tiny hairs, you know, that's been clipped and cut, it's floating around. Sometimes it gets hard to breathe.
one last leg, baby. Okay. Let's do this, buddy. And he did poo earlier, like a lot when we went out. So I'll let him out again after we're done, but I doubt he needs to poo or anything. So I, I really do like to take a break between the bath and the haircut. Cause first of all, they've been through a lot, you know, <laughs> all that combing and everything, it takes time. And for me seeing them go potty, um, it just helps me feel a little bit more relaxed while I groom. Um, sometimes I worry that they're uncomfortable and that's why they're moving around. But, you know, when I take them out and we take a break and I see that they did go potty, then it does make me feel much better. There we go. And I, I think it is a welcome break, you know, just to kind of break, up, break it up a little bit. So we're not just, you know, working the whole entire time. I mean, you know, I am working most of the time, but, you know, just after the bath, drying him up. And he doesn't really like being dried too much. He doesn't like the sound of the dryer, especially around his head and face. So after stressing him out, you know, with the bath and the dryer and all of that, I just think it's a nice little way to take a break, give them a moment to relax. And then when we do the haircut, they're much more cooperative. And I think just, you know, the more we give them a pleasant experience each time, then they behave better and better every time. And each visit gets easier and easier. Today took a little bit longer because it is the springtime. And whenever there's a change in the season, the dogs go through a coat change as well especially their undercoat, their secondary hairs, the ones that are more like, um, like goose down feathers, you know, for insulation and protection, temperature control, things like that. But uh, yeah, a lot of that was, he had a lot of mats and tangles because he's going through a coat change. So today took a little bit longer for that reason. But other than that, he behaved so well. Oh my goodness. He even let me brush all his teeth today. There we go. So now, I'm gonna get my blenders and make sure everything is nice and blended. And then I'm gonna get my thinners again and just do the very last final finishing touches. Such a good boy, I'm so proud of you. Okay. There we go. Lots of combing. There's no secret to grooming. It's just lots of combing. There's no magic wand or a secret potion. You just gotta be willing to spend the time to keep combing over and over. <laughs> okay. There we go. Now, you know what? Instead of blending shears, I'm just gonna use these bigger thinners. So these bigger thinners, and then I'm gonna finish with these finer thinners. Okay, so let me go and start with this head. So anything that's sticking out, I'm just gonna trim off. See that? To make it nice and soft. There we go. There we go. Soften this bottom area here.
Okay. I like to think of these thinners like erasers. <laughs> so I, I try to, again, imagine a nice round shape and then any hairs that stick out of the round circle that you're imagining, you just erase it, rub it off <laughs> with the thinners. There we go. How does that look? A little bit lopsided there. And a lot of it could be to how his owners pet him as well, you know, causing it to get like kind of a cowlick <laughs> or train, you know, it kind of parts the hair weirdly. There we go. It looks all right though. Nice. And then here. I'll soften that up a bit. All right. There we go. Then, okay. All righty. Now, I love going through the, going over the feet with the thinners, as long as they don't play happy feet, because it just gives them a nice, soft, rounded look, and it gets you that much closer to the toes. So it gives you that much tighter of a cut without giving you those sharp lines. See that? So I really like this. I like to go through. It's a little bit, it's a little bit tricky because they move, you know, and humans move too, but if a human moved the way a dog moves when a human gets a haircut, I think a human would be escorted out and maybe, you know, they might be strongly encouraged not to come back to that salon. Just, you know, my guess, but... <laughs> Because the dogs move and they don't really stay still and you're doing a haircut on their entire body, it does pose a little bit more of a challenge, I think, than your typical human's haircut. There you go.
think, you know, the whole aspect of the dogs, right? How the dog is feeling. I think that really does add a whole nother element that makes our job a little more skill involved than most people would think. It's not just being able to do a haircut. It's being able to do a haircut while controlling your own emotions and anxiety by being able to breathe and calm yourself down when you're, you know, feeling a little rushed or maybe frustrated or maybe even scared because the dog's not really staying still and you're worried that you might accidentally cut the dog. So all of these things, I think, make dog grooming an art form. It's a craft, it really is. And to master it takes, I would say at least, at least six years, in my opinion, to really start to master it and get a feel for how the dogs move, you know, recognizing patterns. I think, you know, to really start to feel like, wow, you know, I feel like I've got a really good grip on on my craft, on my style, you know, my art form. I think it takes about six years, six to eight years. And a lot of people say that it's about 10 years. 10 years is a good rule of thumb, you know? It takes about 10 years before anybody really starts to feel like, you know, they've got a good handle on what they do. <clears throat> but for me, I think it's kind of become opposite. I think now that I'm in my 10th year, year of doing it, it's like, I don't know. I'm, I'm always thinking of trying to think of new ways to do stuff. You know, a different way maybe, a better way. And I'm starting to realize like how much I don't really know, how much there is to really learn. Okay. There we go. But yeah, I'm always trying to do my best with every haircut that I do, with every dog that I groom. I'm always trying to do my best and best my best. Because I don't want, I don't ever want people to say like, yeah, that guy Drew, he's pretty good, but you should have seen him five years ago. He was really in his prime then. You know, I don't, I want people to say, wow, he was good before, but you should see him now. The guy just keeps getting better. The guy keeps working on his craft, you know? The guy keeps practicing. And so, I think that being the best is not important, but the desire to do your best is. I think that's everything. I told my daughters too, because my younger daughter, Annabelle, she's super competitive and she gets super angry and loses her temper when she, get, when she loses a game, like Super Mario, Smash Brothers. But whenever she plays a game with us and she loses, she gets super angry. And I told her, Annabelle, I love that you get angry, you know? I told her I prefer that over just, you know, just not caring, that whole, just kind of resignation. Like, oh well, I lost, it's okay, who cares? I don't, I, you know? Like, <clears throat> I told her that winning is not that important, but the desire to win, you know, that, willi that, that willingness to try hard, you know, the, the want, that desire to win, I think that's important, you know? I told my daughter, I don't ever want that, that to go away. You know, it's important to want to do your best, to want to win. And it's okay if you don't. We actually learn more when we lose than when we win. So it's okay if you don't win, but that desire to win, the desire to do your best, to put your best foot forward, I think that is important no matter what you do. Okay. Okay, so now, there we go.
Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm going to put this bad boy away and move to my finer one. And then what I'm going to do is just do the final touch at work, the fine tuning. There we go. Okay. You are looking so handsome. There we go. <clears throat> and that's how you keep your dog looking nice and long and round and fluffy. There we go. Okay, bear, oh my goodness, look how beautiful he is. Okay. Okay. Oh my goodness, he's so soft. Wow, teddy bear for real. Okay. Bear, are you a teddy bear? Yes, you are. Okay, let me do a little, there we go, the final turn, right, oh. there we go, Bear, oh my goodness, Bear, you look so cute, look at you, so beautiful with those round feet, let's get a nicer look at you, let's get a full body profile, come on, Bear, work with me, <laughs> awesome, okay, buddy, so let me go ahead and stay. Oops. There we go. <laughs> they give you a tour of their house. Uh, let me go ahead and put this on him. Oh my goodness. Oh, bear. There we go. So he is all done. Oh my goodness. He is so fluffy and soft. Ah, and I'm gonna eat him. You put a little bit of salt and pepper on him and you just, oh. <laughs> oh, bear. Look at how cute he is. Okay, I'm gonna set him down. All right, bear. 
All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Oh my goodness, my hair. <laughs> oh, whoa, there's comments. Whoa. Okay, let me see if there's any questions. Um, Gene, do you, okay. Do you have a schnauzer grooming video? I do. Um, Stella. I'm not sure where it is. Um, I think it's on. might be on my Facebook page, but it might be out here on my YouTube channel. Um, Barker Rice. Hi, June. How goes it? You do not have a cordless 501 boy? No, I don't. Pamela says, Hi, June. You groom great, but I am just here for the jokes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and keep the fridge packed. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh... Dogs like when we laugh. My girl gets all excited hearing, nice, short shank redemption. <laughs> nice. Pamela, I like her. I like you. Pamela Thrasher. Sue Odom says, old dogs can learn new tricks. 69, have mastered your scissor. Wow, you have. Nice. Wait, we might have to do like a scissor flip showdown, right? Anyways. Holy cow. Somebody just gave me, donated $50. Holy cow. Crazy. Reminds me of Joan Jett. I agree with Pamela. Dogs like happy people. Huh. She could finally call you live. Robin P. Nice. Quit Sally. Deposit Estrada. Hey, what's up? TJ Ireland. Finished cutting my own dog earlier. I, it was tough, but I got... Oh, do you need to go outside, buddy? Oh, I think Bear wants to go outside. Okay, let's go outside, buddy. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, hold on. Look at him. Oh, oh, Bear. Okay, we'll go outside. Let me just finish real quick. Um, how can you keep the head still as you cut the hair around the eyes? Jedi. It sounds, it sounds silly, but literally you have to see the dog being still and cooperating for you. You have to see it in your mind first. See it happening, breathe, and then go for it. Um, APEA Dog Grooming. Hi, Jan. Who's that? Um, that's Bear. Uh, Lee says, love me some Bear. Yeah, right? Melissa, perfection. Oh my goodness, Melissa. Treat the kids. Crazy. Melissa is the one who gave me $50. Crazy, Melissa. Oh, my God. That was awesome grooming. Thanks. Thank you so much, yo. Yo, a prey boo. -bo. Um, Pamela is amazing. Awesome. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, everybody. Oh, my goodness. Look at how. You are such a gentleman, buddy. Look at him waiting all patiently. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to let him outside one more time, and then I'm going to get cleaned up. But um, yeah, thanks guys. Hopefully that was helpful. If you're grooming your own dogs, you want to you know learn how to do the like the nice fluffy teddy bear look. That's how I do it. See you guys.